what exactly is molecular photochemistry? This is a good place to start. We're going to basically establish our foundational definitions uh, for the rest of the course in this video. What is molecular photochemistry? So first, let's start with photochemistry. It's the study of chemical reactions and physical changes that result from the interactions between matter and specifically, and, and this is important, most importantly, visible or ultraviolet light. These are the wavelengths of light that actually promote chemical reactions. They hit the sweet spot where we're exciting electrons to higher energy levels, exciting electronic wave functions, we might say, to higher wave functions. Now, what about molecular? What makes photochemistry molecular? Well, clearly a focus on molecules, right? And I think it helps actually to think about what molecular photochemistry is not. Um, if you think about, for example, silicon-based photovoltaics, these involve single crystals of silicon, network solids, very, very, very large extended networks of bonded silicon atoms. And this is not molecular photochemistry because the excited state that is generated when a single crystal of silicon is excited by, say, solar light is, is delocalized, profoundly delocalized. We're more interested in the structures and dynamics of discrete molecular excited states, things with, you know, on the order of 10 to 100 atoms, perhaps at the top. We can also talk about polymer photochemistry. That's molecular in some sense, since the monomer unit is repeating inside a polymer. We're going to throw that in with molecular photochemistry as well. But network solids, and in particular inorganic network solids like crystal and silicon, are not molecular photochemistry. What is molecular photochemistry is, is more typified by a reaction scheme like this. We're very often interested in what happens when a molecule in a reaction mixture is photo excited and a chemical reaction takes place. So for example here, the molecule that is actually photo excited by this light at 427 nanometers, that's a blue LED, is this iridium complex. It gets photo excited, that ends up doing an electron transfer process with one of these reactants, and a chemical reaction occurs from there. Either electron transfer or energy transfer process, I should say, takes place. And so we're interested in what does that iridium complex look like right after the absorption of a photon takes place? How does the electron or energy transfer process happen, and which of these species is involved? And, and what happens from there? What are the secondary processes once the photo excitation has kind of run its course, and, and what we call the primary process has kind of run its course, what happens from there? These are all questions we're interested in in molecular photochemistry, and everything here is a discrete molecular species. Even the solvent, right, is a discrete molecular species. That's molecular photochemistry. Now, where do we see this coming up in, in everyday life or in scientific research? Well, photosynthesis is the most prevalent area where molecular photochemistry is very important. The first step, absorption of a photon and photo-induced electron transfer that occurs in photosynthesis is profoundly relevant to this course and to the, the concepts and theories of molecular photochemistry. Of course, photochemical reactions where we're interested in converting molecular reactants into molecular products and the molecule that gets photo excited is a molecule, I should say, the, the thing, the species that gets photo excited is a molecule, photochemical reactions. And then solar cells, when the absorbing species as an organic molecule uh, are also of interest to us, organic photovoltaics, which is a growing area of importance as we discover how discrete molecular species can be used in place of, for example, crystalline silicon to harness the energy of, of the sun. Now, we can kind of divide our study of photochemistry into two areas. Photophysics is the study of interactions of light and matter or the dynamics of excited states that result in physical changes. So no bonds are made or broken is the key. Things like the absorption or emission of a photon from an excited state or the conversion of one excited state, we might call that R star, to another excited state, R star prime. These are photophysical processes. Deactivation of the excited state back to the ground state is another one, and this is worth writing out as well. Going from an excited molecule to a ground state molecule, even without the emission of light, is actually still the area of photophysics since the excited state was typically generated by the absorption of a photon, right? The reverse, we might say, of the process shown here. Photochemistry happens when a chemical change 
takes place. And of course, it's the opposite to the first case. When bonds are made and broken, we're doing photochemistry. This is a general paradigm for photochemical reactions that we'll explore a little bit later. Um, for the time being, I'll just focus on the key idea is that a bond is made or broken. And there's, of course, a gray area. When a molecule is photoexcited, bonds often get longer. And, you know, where do we draw the line between a bond is broken and still intact can get a little bit fuzzy. So there is a gray area. We will talk about that gray area in some detail. Um, but by and large, whenever we see chemical change taking place, that's photochemistry. Whenever we do not see chemical change taking place and just deactivation to a ground state or conversion to a different excited state of the same molecule takes place, that's photophysics.